Hello class, so this set of lessons are to learn about diabetes and what causes diabetes and what are some of the effects on the cells and how to manage diabetes and also some of the um, pathologies and the different complications of diabetes will all be discussed in these set of slides. But first we'll talk about explaining diabetes and also um, talk about the difference between type 1 and type 2. Okay, so diabetes mellitus. So the term diabetes actually means to pass through. So it's kind of like a urine type thing. So there's actually many forms of diabetes. There's also diabetes insipidus and also other forms when there's something wrong with the urine. But diabetes mellitus specifically says that the urine that's passing through is sweetened like honey. Mel means honey, okay? So diabetes mellitus actually means that the urine is sweet. Um, but in, in what we do every day, we can kind of shortening it to diabetes, okay? The diabetes affects a lot of people, okay? So there's about 30.3 million people in the U.S., with diabetes or more. And up to one in five people with their diabetes don't even know they have diabetes. So this becomes um, a healthcare crisis in some way. And also if they're not managing their diabetes successfully, then there's many, many complications that goes with it. The most co common form of diabetes is actually type two diabetes. Okay, that is the most common, making up about 85 to 95 percent of people with diabetes. Um, type 1 is only about 9 to 10 percent, and that is um, type 1 diabetes. Okay, so the two are distinguished by what happens in the disease, how the cause. Okay, so let's take a look at a, this comparison chart. So sometimes I like to compare it side by side in a chart, and there's also some videos you can watch. The most com um the the two di most common diabetes is type two and that's called non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, and type one is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. So what's the difference? So type ones depend on insulin; they cannot make insulin because the most common cause is the autoimmune disease destroy their beta cells. Uh, whereas type 2, they're perfectly fine with making insulin. That's why they're non-insulin dependent, but they're insensitive or resistant to that insulin signal. Okay, um, Type 1 tend to happen earlier in life because of genetic and family history and, of course, the autoimmune disease. Type 2 tend to be associated with lifestyle. There is some genetic component, but obesity and the lack of activity really increases the risk of type 2 diabetes. So in both cases, um, you, the loss of the insulin activity makes that whole control system for blood glucose hom homeostasis less effective. So diet planning and exercise is critical. The treatment of the disease is different. Uh, in the type 1, you really need the insulin, so they have to have that treatment. In type 2, um, there's medication that help to increase the response to insulin, but it's also medication to do increase the production of insulin as well to make sure that the sensitivity increases. So the best way to compare this is actually to draw them all side by side. So I have drawn them all for you. I encourage you to also practice drawing it out. And what we're highlighting here is the orange, which is the pathology. I want to highlight it here actually using this lime green highlighter. But you can see that in all three cases, if the, same per, the, the people eat the same meal, glucose will go up in all the cases. In normal individual with normal signaling to review what we learned from the last part is that the key, the insulin key unlocks the storage in the liver and the muscle and the glucose goes right in and this also includes the fast cells. I just didn't put it here, but also fast cells. But in type one, the beta cells are destroyed right here. So there's autoimmune destruction. So in most cases, um, there is very low insulin, if not insulin at all. So there is no key to open the storage lockers, right? So without the key and without the storage open, the glucose does not go anywhere. 
so there is high glucose in the blood. Okay, and no glucose uptake and no glycogen in the liver or the muscle. In type two, the insulin is actually present. They have plenty, they have the insulin, except the fact that the problem is the obesity and other things that are going on could be low genetics and other things make resistance factor, which is called resistance factor. There's names for multiple types of resistance factors. These little X's, okay? So these X's are put into the blood. And then they attach to the lock. So with all, with them attached to the lock, the insulin come here and try to open the locker, but it doesn't open very easy. So the insulin does bind. Let me add that here. The insulin does bind. But what happens is small amounts of glucose are taken in. Okay? And the small amount of glucose is taken in, so you're have a lower decrease in storage, okay? And as the resistance goes higher and higher, um, then the storage goes lower and lower and the blood glucose goes higher and higher, okay? So that's the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Okay, I do want to spend a minute to look at this idea of this resistance factor here and what causes it. So in type 2 diabetes, so we're looking at type 2, there's a tr three component effect of why the disease increases. One is the genetics and the, envir the environment, the lack of activity. Okay, our environment is that we're in the car, we drive, we walk less, and we sit on the sofa a lot. Think about a hundred years ago when people were working their farms. They they didn't have a car. They'd walk everywhere. Um, you know, so, and they wash their laundry by hand. So there's just a lot more work involved compared to now. And of course, we also have plentiful of food over nutrition. And of course, the food is high fat and high sugar. So those three things combined can cause the adipose tissue to increase. So increasing adipose size, the size right? The fat cells got bigger. Um, increasing storage will increase the insulin resistance because now you're making more resistance factors. Also, um, the lack of activity makes the muscle smaller, so decreasing mus muscle size. But also, the less you use, the, the less the muscle is used, the less fat and glucose it is burned, so the storage in the muscle is lower, and um, there's less of your storage. In so that's going to be resistant to wanting to store because it's not being used. Bad diet can actually cause fatty liver or illness to the liver health, and then that will also increase insulin resistance, and then the fatty liver is going to be less able to store glucose. So taking all together, the increase in the resistance factor and the decreased storage space um, will cause diabetes to become worse in type 2 diabetics. So that's the comparison of type 1 and type 2. So I do want you to really review it and um, understand the difference and how they compare.